there's a rattle of gunfire in the Holy Land, there is cheering in Washington and Hebrew dances of joy for a Jewish homeland that has been reborn. Haganah troops search for Arabs after capturing the city. More than 4,000 Palestinians have been forced to flee their homes. Their journey as refugees has just started. Intensive diplomatic negotiations on the Mideast continue today in Washington as Israel's Prime Minister, Golda Meir, met with President Nixon at the White House for 80 minutes. It's a very great privilege for me speaking in behalf of the American people. Prior knowledge of the Watergate break. Alasan kita ane mubasar. Good morning, Madam Prime Minister. Good morning. <coughs> Please swear. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, knowing that I will be subject to punishment provided by law if I do not. Madam Prime Minister, let us begin with October the 5th, 1973.
Where's the fingering I showed you? East Finchley School, Mrs. Epstein speaking. This is the chemist. This is the postmistress. Go ahead. Zinc, cadmium, chlorine, hydrogen. Hello. This is the postmistress. This is the baker. Go ahead. Zinc, cadmium, chlorine, hydrogen. Put out a statement expressing my disappointment at the Austrian capitulation to the terrorists. Disappointment or maybe frustration? Yes, frustration, that's better. Speaker. Prime Minister. To what do I owe the pleasure? I heard from my spy, the chemist. He wants to meet tonight. His warning of war. As he did in May. The warning was accurate. He cried wolf. That's how it was perceived. Why do you trust this man? He knows everything. And he says war is coming. Yeah, well, of course war is coming, but when? Without Diane's support, there can be no mobilization. And he is unconvinced that the threat is imminent. If he resigns, the government falls. It's, it's that simple. And then the Arabs will most certainly attack. What does your gut tell you? My gut is none of your business. But... Hmm. You're right, there is something. Ask the chemist for a date, a document, something concrete I can work with. I'll stay in Tel Aviv with my son over Kippur. After your meeting, call me on the secure line. No one saw you enter, Madame Prime Minister. That's all clear. Rosenfeld. I can't see any new growth. The cobalt radiation appears to be working. But the cigarettes and the black coffee, you're making my job much harder. And you mine. <laughs> Could you manage another treatment? Do I have a choice? Not really. This lymphoma is aggressive. Make sure she eats and takes her medication. you to promise me one thing. If you detect the slightest sign of dementia, you will tell me I can't trust the flatterers. I promise. Now, Madam Prime Minister, can I have this?
Do you believe him? Yes. Thank you. Marwan says the attack will begin around sundown. Soviet diplomats and their families are leaving Egypt. If he's right, we have less than 12 hours to prepare. So that detests the Russians. It's not the first time he's kicked them out. The Egyptians need the Russians to operate the semi-cells. Yes, they've taught them which buttons to press, of course. Anything's possible. Are the Russians leaving Syria too? I haven't heard anything. Show them the photos, Benny. We overflew the canal last night. We've never seen a build-up like it. Tanks, artillery, bridging equipment, thousands of men. I admit the numbers, it's enough to give you a stroke. Is the eavesdropping system switched on? Yes. What have you heard? Nothing. We've got their command line stepped. If Sadat had given a signal for war, we would have heard it. When he breaks wind, I hear it first. <laughs> so you've seen the report from London? Marwan said the same in May. Without long-range bombers, any Egyptian attack will fail. Shazi's plan is to cross the canal, dig in under a missile umbrella, then bleed us to death. They won't need long-range bombers for that. They also have a plan to destroy our economy by luring us to the front again and again. The Egyptians and Syrians have nearly a million men on our borders. We must act. Come on, they mobilized in similar numbers 22 times this year alone. Regulars can hold the line for 48 hours, but the reserve will need three days to mobilize. If the warning is accurate, then we should have mobilized yesterday. If, if. We've been surprised. We must attack now. My boys are fueled up and sitting in their cockpits. Just give me the word and I'll smash them. I would not support the first strike. They have not even given the signal for war. What about a, a partial mobilization? 60,000 troops. Any more will be seen as an act of aggression. I need 200,000. 60,000 or 200,000? What difference does it make? You want to mobilize on Yom Kippur, the holiest day? The political fallout will bring down the government. Which is why it is the perfect day to attack. I suggest we mobilize 120,000 troops. Better to be safe than sorry, huh? 120,000 men is not enough. It is. It's not. It is. It is not. We'll be outnumbered seven to one. The decision has been made. 120,000. Thank you, gentlemen. Did you trust the Egyptian spy, Marwan? Well, I was worried that he might be a double agent, of course, but I... I trusted the judgment of Zamir. So why didn't you mobilize your reserves on the 5th, on the day that he warned you of war? Diane wasn't losing any sleep, and he knew the situation in the north and the south. Should I have gone against him? You are the Prime Minister, and an extra 24 hours to prepare for war? That might have saved many lives. Yes, well, that's the question, isn't it? Morning, dear.
I was beginning to panic. I need soup. No, I, I'll have it later. It's both or neither. Okay. Everywhere I shut. I got this from the airport. stood for the Prime Minister. Where's your son? Heading to the canal. He's a tank driver with Wren's division. At 10 a.m., we began mobilizing 120,000 troops, including two armored brigades. A few minutes ago, the Syrians began removing the camouflage netting from their guns. In the canal, the Egyptians are cutting channels through their sand barrier in preparation for crossing. When will the attack start? Towards sundown. This is our best information. It seems likely that we've been surprised. So how the hell did this happen, Zaira, huh? Who gave you a hundred million dollars for your damn eavesdropping system. And you promised us 72 hours notice in case of an attack. This is not a court of inquiry. And watch your language, please. The Egyptians are shelling across the canal. Syrian jets are bombing over land. The Egyptians have fired a Kelt cruise missile at Tel Aviv. No, no. I'm not going to get under the table, but don't let me stop you. You all have a plan. Go back to your ministries and put it into effect with calm precision. Thank you, gentlemen. We place our trust in you. The Syrians are the immediate threat. I'll go up to the north and command. Go on the television first. Reassure the people. Then teach our enemies a lesson they'll never forget. We will crush their bones. We will tear them limb from limb. Secretary Kissinger on line one. One moment, please. He's picking up. Hello? Mr. Secretary. Madam Prime Minister. I'm sorry to wake you, Henry. Not at all. We've got trouble with the neighbors again. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, could I ask who fired the first shot? A first strike would have made things much easier for us, but I gave the president my word. I appreciate that. We've been surprised, Henry. And this time, it won't be over in a week. I'll start to apply diplomatic pressure. Please do, but be clear on one point. We will keep fighting until every Egyptian soldier 
has been driven back across the canal. They will gain nothing by force. If they want their land back, they must recognize the sovereign state of Israel. I understand. Thank you, Henry. Good luck, Golda. They'll help us, won't they? If they get caught sending us one bullet, the Saudis will cut off their oil. He wants us to win. But with a bloody nose. That way, the Egyptians will see him as a friend, and they'll abandon the Soviets, because containing the Russians, that's all he cares about. The enemy's tanks have penetrated our lines and occupied several outspots. We have suffered losses in lives and territory. That much... What the hell is wrong with him? It is more or less as we expected of the first day of battle. I cannot and will not give exact numbers. Get me medicine. All I can say. I need a speech. Is that this battle will end in victory. God help us all. We overflew the canal an hour ago. The Egyptians have 10 operational bridges. Two divisions have crossed and are digging in on the east bank. And the Golan? Syrian tanks are advancing in the thousands. We are trying our best, but it's very, very serious. Moshe. How's that? Fine. Are you all right? Yes, of course. Go to the Golan. See what's happening. Report back. Go. Yes. 30 seconds, Madam Prime Minister. Are you ready, Prime Minister? Four, three, two. Today, <clears throat> around 2 p.m., the Egyptian and Syrian armies launched an offensive against Israel. The enemy suffered serious losses. The rulers of Egypt and Syria have long planned a ceasefire violation. In their cowardice, the attackers spread the lie that Israel opened fire first. Our enemies hoped to surprise the citizens of Israel on Yom Kippur. But we were not surprised. For several days, the Israeli intelligence services have known that the Egyptian and Syrian armies were preparing for a combined attack. We wholeheartedly trust in the spirit and power of the IDF to defeat the enemy.
We lost. We lost the north. It's Armageddon. We lost the north. I alerted the Demona. The nuclear weapon. Yes, that's what I did. You did what? Are you serious? Get Dado up here now. Come, Mush. This is Come another Masada, Golda. Come on. Come. I saw it with my own eyes. I swear. We lost around 80, 100 tanks. The whole division is gone. Just gone. In all sincerity and friendship, I offer you my resignation, God. I have failed. I need you on your feet. Do you understand? No more of this. Go home. Wash your face. And snap out of it. Go. What's going on? Have you blown the bridges over the Jordan? How would the reserves get up to the Golan without the bridges? He wants to arm the nuclear weapon. Has he got mad? Dayan. Dayan is finished. Take no orders from him. You are in full command now. We had a terrible night. The Syrians have broken through our lines with many tanks, but for some reason, they have not pressed forward. Maybe they're short of fuel or they don't have orders, I don't know. It's given us a breathing space. I've instructed the Air Force to bring planes from the south. They have orders to attack anything that moves. The situation is difficult. But the 679 are fighting hard. They're tough boys. They won't let their country down. Now, on the Egyptian front, we have failed to stop the enemy crossing the canal. Our tanks arrived too late and in too few numbers. The Egyptians have brought up mobile SAM missile launchers and the Air Force has been hit very hard. How many Phantoms have we lost? Around 30. 50 aircrew dead or missing. And men? 170 for sure, maybe more. Most pressingly, the strong points are surrounded. Approximately 600 soldiers, most of them reservists, are trapped. Why weren't they evacuated? General Agonen told them to fight to the end. The Egyptians are dug in across this line. Gonen is preparing a counterattack. Sharon is head to the south. The plan is to relieve the strong points and drive the Egyptians back across the canal. You rescue these boys. Golda. You're back. Any more from your friend? He's in Cairo. The Egyptians have crossed the canal. Dado is planning a counterattack. It is what they're expecting. We'll be walking into a trap. There are 400 kids trapped in the fortresses. Uh, the Egyptians will be waiting. You must stop this attack, Olda. Do not make the military decisions. But, Golda, it will be suicidal. I'm a politician, not a soldier. Golda, Golda please, I can't... What the hell do you want from me? Golda. Golda, are you all right? Breathe, Golda, please. Breathe. Do you want to drink something? The enemy has tasted blood. There is no reason for them to stop now. This is 1948 again. 
we are fighting for our lives. If the Americans throw us to the dogs and the Arabs reach Tel Aviv, I will not be taken alive. And you are to make sure of that. The Americans, they won't let us down. Why not? Because you won't let it happen. Sorry, but you're not dead yet. <laughs> mm, alive and kicking. What is this we're hearing? Our troops in the canal, they're surrounded. These are the fortifications where the boys are trapped. Bran and his tank division will push forward across this plain, smash through the Egyptian line, and relieve the strong points. The counterattack is starting.
It's your anxiety talking, Golda. Come on, I'll make her some more coffee, all right? How are you? Fine. You coming in? I need you. I'll be there. Come, Moshe. Sit. Uh, I lost another 13 Phantoms and 9 Skyhawks. 11 pilots dead at this rate. Three, maybe four more days and I'm out of the fight. What happened to Sharon and his flanking attack? He drove around the desert all afternoon with 30 photographers in tow. Didn't fire a shot. That man. And Bren? His division is virtually destroyed. We still have uh, 400 boys trapped in the fortresses along the canal. We're working on a new rescue plan. The Egyptians know that. No one left behind. It's a trap. No one left behind, speaker. What is the point of risking more lives? Let's be honest with ourselves. If we sent a rescue mission, its purpose would be to save our reputation as much as save those boys. So, what are our options? Sharon wants to cross the canal and cut them off from the rear. Would that work? The Egyptians have two divisions on the West Bank lying in wait. He'd be wiped out. What's the position on the Golan? We push them back to the ceasefire line. The Syrians are close to collapse. Can you push them back further? towards Damascus. If we could panic Assad, he would put pressure on Sadat to attack again, exposing his tanks in open country. Dado, what do you think? The Egyptians are well dug in. They're not leave their positions. Sadat got his victory. Yes. But does he know it? I want you to bomb the outskirts of Damascus, Benny. Get Assad really mad. I need more planes. Get Kissinger on the phone, please. Cheer up, Moisha. Things could be worse. Oh. You could have my feet. <laughs> I understand, but the president is in a difficult position. The winter is coming. If the Saudis were... The to... Russians have started a massive airlift. We're seeing planes streaming into Cairo and Damascus. We have lost 500 tanks and one-third of the Air Force. 500? Yes, and 30 Phantoms. I could have launched a preemptive strike, but I didn't, to save your blushes. That decision cost us dearly. Watergate is sweeping through Washington like a fire storm, Golda. Nixon is a lame duck. But you're not. Would it help if I came to Washington? You want to fly here during a war? Yes. Golda, that would cause problems. The Jewish community here would be alarmed. <laughs> no doubt. If the Arabs defeat us with Soviet weapons, what message does that send to the free world, Henry? I have some phantoms for you. Thank you. Good night, Gorda. Israel simply can't wait for uh, the dust to settle, and the Arabs can't wait for the dust to settle in the Middle East. Uh, both sides are at fault. Both sides need 
to start negotiating. That is our position. We're not pro-Israel, and we're not pro-Arab, and we're not any more pro-Arab because they have oil and Israel hasn't. We are pro-peace, and it's the interest of the whole area for us to get those negotiations off dead center, and that is why we will use our influence with Israel, and we will use our influence, what influence we have, with the various Arab states and the non-Arab states. Yes. General Sharon, it's an honor. Yeah. These pictures were taken three hours ago by one of my scouts on the canal. We found a gap in the Egyptian line here, just north of the Great Bitter Lake. The second Egyptian army is here to the north, the third army here to the south, in the middle. The canal is unprotected. I have motorized rafts. Big enough to carry tanks. I could have 50 tanks on the west bank before dawn. I push north, spreading panic. Who would like coffee? Thank you. Um, forgive my ignorance. What do these symbols mean? The 4th and the 21st Egyptian divisions. They're on the west bank of the canal waiting yes. to cross. I remember. So... Eric, you want to cross the canal with 50 tanks and 2,000 men and take on two divisions. I believe that's 600 tanks and 30,000 men. Is that your plan? We are losing men. Every day we are losing men and machines without improving our position. Dado, would a crossing succeed? I doubt it. And it might lead to catastrophe. For God's sake. Moshe, say something. Nobody doubts your bravery, Arik. But Dado is right. If you crossed, you'd be destroyed. There would be no one left to stop the Arabs. No, no, we must attack now. I have news. The Egyptians will renew the offensive in two days' time. The 4th and the 21st Division will cross the canal and join the attack. If they crossed, Cairo will be undefended. No one could be that stupid. The Egyptians are about to make a terrible mistake. I suggest we let them make it. It would seem a ridiculous decision. No. I don't think so. Sadat is the first Arab leader to defeat the Jews in battle. So he's feeling euphoric. Invincible. Do you think a few sand dunes along the Suez Canal will seem enough when the gates of Jerusalem are beckoning? Knowing when you've lost is easy. It's knowing when you've won that's hard. <laughs> we'll wait for them to cross. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Eric, you'll get your chance. And for that, they will make you prime minister. Just remember, all political careers end in failure.
won't be here for long. You take care of yourself. This is not me talking to you as your boss. You're family to me. You understand me? Cheson is missing. I'll speak to him. No, no, not now. The meeting is starting. Oh. Go, I'll talk to him. Thank you. <laughs> We overflowed the canal at dawn. As you can see, the Egyptian tanks are on the bridges. The Egyptians are crossing. Cairo is undefended. We are hearing it all on the listening system. They will attack tomorrow. Time. Are you ready? We will be. When they attack, smash them. Good luck. Thank you. Marwan was right. Well done, Sika. The American convoy is here. Egyptians are falling right into our trap. They're crossing the plain in front of the canal. Our tanks are dug in on this little ridge, on the top of this little ridge. From below you can only see the turret and the gun. Very hard to hit. Very hard. I've reinforced Grand Division with tanks from the Jordan border. They're old and slow, but their guns are very accurate.
They've had enough. Well done, everybody. We've destroyed them. They'll not attack again, but crossing the canal will not be easy. The crossing is only possible here, in the area called the Chinese farm. And it's only two kilometers wide. When the Arabs realize what's going on, the jaws will snap shut like a crocodile and we'll be the ones cut off. We're in the best position we've been in since the fighting began. I think we should think seriously about accepting a ceasefire. We are facing an unholy alliance between the Soviets and the Arabs that must be defeated. If our enemies stop fearing us, they will attack again and again and again. This war cannot end with Sadat on the East Bank. Can Sharon get his tanks across the canal? Moshe, what does your gut tell you? To cross. Gunda, I'm all right. <coughs> Prime Minister, the crossing is started. Dado, what is happening? Sharon is now crossing the canal with rubber boats. Uh, there's a fight to keep the uh, bridgehead open. Chinese farm. We're in Africa, Golda. We're in Egypt. Bravo, guys. Well done. Engaging. To be engaged. Large arms. They're hitting us. They're hitting us with large arms. I'm getting reports of a counterattack on our forces. There's fire directly at Chinese farm. Casualties. A lot of casualties. 184, what is going on? Sorry, we're ambushed. Doesn't sound good. the news there's heavy fighting around Chinese farm but the bridge is secure Sharon has 30 tanks on the west bank we're building a potter bridge Brand's division should cross soon well done and the casualties <sighs> 
300 dead. And more to come. Hello. Do you know how many people died because of that crossing? On the 14th? Seven hundred dead or missing, approximately two thousand wounded, and some three hundred prisoners. I counted them all, Mr. Chairman. Every one of them. Trust me. Dado, where are we? Ren wants to cut Suez from the Cairo road, somewhere near here, kilometer 101. You mean the entire Third Army would be cut off? Yes. There's no water in the East Bank. It won't last long. We'd have to die by the throat. You have to negotiate. How many men in the Third Army? About 30,000. You'd have me create an army of widows and orphans. Are you prepared to do that? The world must believe that I am. Prime Minister. Kissinger's presidential jet landed at Lode International Airport in Tel Aviv late this afternoon. Kissinger was greeted at the airport by a small delegation of officials before getting into a waiting car and was driven to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir. The meeting took place at Meir's house in Tel Aviv and they are sure to discuss a ceasefire agreement between Israel and its Arab neighbors. Welcome to Israel, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Madam Prime Minister. So this is General Elazar, our Chief of Staff. General Secretary. General Zaira, Head of Military Intelligence. Pleased to meet you. Zvi Zamir, Head of Mossad. Yeah, and of course, Moshe Dayan, Hello, our Moshe. Minister Hello. of Defense.
Thank you for coming, Henry. Of course. Are you hungry? No, thank you. My housekeeper, Leo, made some borscht. No, no, please. Uh, the Russians gave me two huge dinners last night, one after the other. To be honest, I'm feeling a bit uh, uncomfortable. No, oh, those Russians is all about strategy. Come sit. You know, they jammed the communication equipment on my plane. Mm, of course. Those Russians, they brought nothing but misery to the world. Normally, I would agree with you. Of course, there is Tolstoy. Mm, and Dostoevsky. Misery on every page. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, thank you. You will have to eat it, Henry. She's a survivor. Enjoy. Mm. It's very good, thank you. Madam Prime Minister, in uh, terms of our work together, I think it's important that you remember that I am first an American, second I am Secretary of State, and third I am a Jew. You forget that in Israel we read from right to left. <laughs> of course. <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> to defeat Henry. Mm. President Nixon sends his regards. When he drinks, he talks about you. My name must be on his lips all the time. <laughs> Golda, OPEC has declared the United States a principal hostile nation. The Saudis have cut off our oil. Crude has jumped from four dollars a barrel to twelve, so... You can see that the American people will pay a high price for supporting Israel. Which is why we need the ceasefire agreement. First things first. Here is a list of every prisoner of war. We have taken some 9,000 men. Not that Assad or Sadat care less about their men. I want a list of every prisoner of war, a date for their return, and the return of the bodies. Brezhnev assures me you will talk to Sadat. I need a guarantee, Henry, and one from Assad. He's the worst. Fingernails torn out. Our boys come home in pieces. His country is traumatized. My generals are begging me to occupy Cairo. Sharon is, a, is like a dog on the leash. If you do that, you'll be on your own. Israel's long-term interests will not be served by a fracturing of our relationship, Golda. Sadat has already agreed to the terms of the ceasefire. Oh, of course he has. He's on the brink of defeat. It will give him a chance to regroup. You are the only person in the world who could possibly understand what I'm going through. Yes, I know how you feel, but we need a ceasefire. I thought we were friends, Henry. We will always protect Israel. Like you did in 48? We had to get our weapons from Stalin. Stalin! Our survival is not in your gift. If we have to, we will fight alone. I'm uh, stopping in London for a few hours on the way home. I should arrive in Washington around 9 a.m. in the morning tomorrow, your time. At which time, I will have to announce the ceasefire. That will give you 18 hours to secure your supply lines. But I warn you, Golda, 
Any attempt to encircle the Third Army will bring the Soviets into the conflict, you understand? I understand. On that basis, does Israel agree to the ceasefire? I have 18 hours. Do it without my face. No, this is not possible. Come on. No. no. Golda, I'm sorry, but I have to get you out of this bed. <laughs> One, two, three. I can't. No. No, it hurts. I know it hurts. It hurts. I know. I'll help you. I promise I will put you in this helicopter. Come on. No. You give them hope. They need to see your face. Golda Meir, Bikra Haboker, at the Chayalinu Bahazit, Noile Tetana Alaim Hamfusamot Shila, Amekonot Befikol Naale Golda. Potahat Miyad Tayton, the Koret Kol Daf Vedaf. זה ביקור הראשון של ראש הממשלה שלנו במצרים. בהתרגשות קלה היא קמה ומביטה החוצה. אנחנו סומכים לחלוטין על שטחי המדבר הנרחבים שכבשנו. השטחים האלה יוצרים ניתוק מוחלט בינינו לבין חיילי הארמיה השלישית שחצו את התעלה ונעו לעברנו. נראה שהיא מודעת למחיר הכבד בחיי אדם של חציית התעלה. הנחיתה הראשונה שלה בצד המצרי. חיילים רבים באים לקראתה. החיילים הפזורים על הדיונות שמסביב מחכים בסבלנות לתצלום קבוצתי. הגברת מאיר מחכה אף היא בסבלנות עד שאחרון הצלמים ינציח את המעמד. החיילים המקיפים אותה אינם מותירים לה ברירה. במצב כזה שאנחנו כבר הספקנו לקטר את הארמיה השלישית וממש לאחר מכן היינו יכולים להשמיד אותם ובזה לחסל את הכיס הזה שנוצר וזה ממש... צורב, כי צה"ל מנצח, ופתאום יש לו איזה כיס מאחורה. We are by our logic, and it seems to me that logic, if one can say that logic makes sense, dictates that we stand like this, and they stand here, and we stand there, and they stand there, and we stand here, and everything is confused. Oh, thank you. Fine. No, so let's say then that there is still no peace, but until then... <laughs> this is luxury. <laughs> What a treat. This is nepotism. <laughs> Cheers to you all. 
גולדה נפרדת לשלום מהחיילים וחוזרת לתל אביב במסוק כדי לטפל בענייני המדינה. Sadat wants you to send your chief of staff to a junction on the Suez Cairo road. Kilometer 101, you know it? We took it a few days ago. When? At dawn. And uh, the Russians? They're watching. Good luck, Golda. Thank you, Henry. הפגישה הסתיימה. דדו יוצא מהאוהל הגדול, וכמוהו המפקד המצרי, הגנרל גמאסי. כל אחד מהם ממהר לדווח למנהיגו על אירועי היום החשוב הזה. Yes, Dado, speak up. 
I have a message from Sadat. He's offering direct talks and an exchange of POWs. He's given the Red Cross a list of names. He referred to you as the Prime Minister of Israel, Golda. He used that word, Israel. Yes, Israel. He's recognizing Israel. Tell General Gamasi that we welcome President Sadat's kind words. switched on the bugging system that's why military intelligence didn't hear the signal for war this cannot be true Zahira switched it on for a few hours on Thursday the 4th but that was a technical test none of the lines were monitored it was then switched off again until Saturday the 6th the morning war broke out no Sarah intercepted a cable from the Iraqis to the Russians, telling them that war was about to begin. But he kept it to himself. Why? Who likes to be wrong? The listening system must be kept secret. No one must know about this. You will take the blame. I will defend your memory. I promise you that.
my gut told me that war was coming. But I ignored it. I should have mobilized that night. All those boys who died, I will carry the pain of that to my grave. Please, don't write that down. everyone this is Laura Stein in Washington exactly one year ago today marks the first time former Prime Minister Gold in the ear met Egyptian President Anwar Sadat face to face let's look back at this monumental moment that shaped the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt that will be signed later today when asked many years ago when do I think peace will come I said the date I do not know but I know under what conditions it will come. There will be a great leader. He will wake up one morning and feel sorry for his own people, for his own sons that have fallen in battle. That day will be the beginning of peace between us and them. Mr. President, your call for peace, and I believe in your sincere desire for peace, as I hope that you believe with a sincere desire on our part for peace, then let us go on. Let us at least conclude one thing. The beginning that you have made with such courage and with such hope for peace, let us decide one thing. It must go on face to face between us and between you so that even an old lady like I am We'll live to see the day. I've always been. You always call me an old lady, Mr. President. <laughs> we will live to see the day. Whoever signs on the part of Israel, I want to live to see that day. And Mr. President, as a grandmother to a grandfather, <laughs> may. May I give you a little present thank for the new granddaughter. Thank and you. thank you for your present that you have given me.